All right, so today we did enrichment problems on buffers. So if you're watching this video online, I recommend pausing it, trying these problems for yourself, and then hitting resume when you're ready to see the answers. So um, online students, you can also download this file from the course website, that would work as well. So here's the first problem. And then here are the second two problems. So again, pause it, give it a try for yourself. And then when you're ready to go over it, you can resume the video. All right, so now to go over these, I'm just gonna give everybody a page break real quick here so I can just go through each one of these. That should be all together. And there we go. All right, now I've got enough room to write. Okay, so we're making 10 liters of a buffer. Does the volume here relevant? Do we care that it's a 10 liter sample? No, that's, that's irrelevant information. Um, we know that it's 0.5 molar formic acid. There's Ka and 0.5 molar sodium formate. Do you need both of these to have a buffer? Yes, right, you need to have the acid and its conjugate base. So, the initial pH of the buffer, we've got a nice little trick here. What is it? The initial pH is easily calculated because both of these are 0.5 molar. Now you can make your ice table and prove this to yourself, right? This will go, this will be 0.5, da 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 da, -da approximately 0.5, this will be 0 0.5, da, 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 approximately 0 0.5, and you'll say Ka is equal to H3O plus, uh, H3O plus is equal to Ka times this over this. Well, these two values are the same, right? That's one. So you don't have to make a nice table here unless you just really want to. Anytime the initial concentrations of Ha and the initial concentration of A minus are equal, the pH is just the pKa. And again, you could prove this to yourself with an ice table, right? I mean, you could go through the work. You'd have approximately 0.5, approximately 0.5. 0.5 over 0.5 is 1, right? So your pH would end up equaling the pKa. So that's just negative log of the Ka, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. Two sig figs, so I should have two decimal places. I got 3.74 as my initial pH. Do we agree for the initial pH? Yes? Okay, again, if you want to make the ice table, great. Now, of course, if these two values are different, let's say this is 0.5 and this is 0.45, you'd obviously have to make the ice table and then plug in either to henderson hasselbach or the other version. Right, but when they're equal, you just take negative log of Ka, save yourself some writing. Do we understand number one? Any questions on number one? Okay. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this so it's bigger on the screen. That way if you're sitting back at the back, you can read it better. Okay. You take a two liter sample of the buffer and add five grams of solid sodium hydroxide to it. What is the new pH? All right, so the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out what's the concentration of that hydroxide ion that I added, right? So that's gonna be moles over liters. Yes? Yes? Okay, so let's see. This is five grams, can I plug grams in here? No, you need to do a little side calculation here, right? 5.0 grams, NaOH, 39.99 grams per mole. I got 0 0.125, right? So that would be 0 0.125 moles. And then what volume am I using? just the volume that I was given in the problem, right? Why am I not using 10? The problem initially said it's a 10 liter stock solution, but I'm not using all 10 of it, I'm only taking a two liter sample. So 2.0 liters. 
<clears throat> so I got 0 0.0625 molar. Is everyone with me on where that came from? All right, now we've got to do the chemistry. We need to do the chemistry. The hydroxide that I add is going to react with the acid component or the base component. Let me ask you this. Is hydroxide an acid or a base? It's a base. So is the base going to react with the acid or the base? The acid component, right? And this is formic acid, HCO2H. Right, so it's going to react with HCO2H. Acid plus base makes what? Acid plus base makes blank plus blank. Salt and water, right? So this is the acid, it's going to donate H plus. So there's where our water's coming from. That's liquid. That's that crazy looking now. And we're going to be left with, now this is sodium formate, right? So Na plus is a spectator. That's why we don't write Na here. That's why we don't write Na here, because this is just a spectator. We're only interested in the net ionic equation. Now we need to make an ice table, right? So we're assuming that this that I add, 0 0.0625, is going to completely react, right? That means that its concentration is going to go down to what number? It goes down to zero, right? So minus 0 0.0625, zero. The problem told me that this was initially 0.5 molar. And so is it going to go down or go up? It's going to go down, right? It's a reactant. This is liquid, who cares? And then the problem tells me this is initially 0 0.50. What's gonna happen to it? Go down or go up? Go up, by what quantity? 0 0.0625, right. So then when I do my addition and subtraction, I get 0 0.4375, that's a liquid, so who cares? And 0 0.5625. And now I've got everything I need to solve for pH, right? Because I can plug this directly into henderson hasselbach If you really wanted to, you could take this E row and make yourself a whole second ice table. But if you understand how henderson hasselbach works, then you don't need to do it again, right? So henderson hasselbach equation says pH is equal to pKa, which we calculated in the first problem, plus the log of the concentration of A minus over H A. So the pKa from the first problem was 3.74 plus the log. Which one of these is A minus 0.5625 or 0.4375? This one's the A minus, right? 0 0.5625 over 0 0.4375. All right, so the log of that is point one nine, so three point seven four plus zero point one zero nine, so I got three point eight five. So it started at three point seven four. It went up to three point eight five. Is that reasonable, given that I added base? Would you expect pH to go up when you add base? Yes, you would. That's a reasonable conclusion. Do we understand this one? We agree on how we do this one. All righty. Let's go on to number, well, excuse me, part B. You then take a 400 mil sample and add five grams of solid sodium hydroxide to it. What's the new pH? So in the previous example, we had a two liter sample. Now we're adding that same quantity in 400 mils, right? So we're taking a smaller sample, but we're adding the same amount of base to it. 
this number of moles is still, right, 5 divided by 39.99 hasn't changed. So that's still point zero point one two five. All right, that hasn't changed. So the concentration of hydroxide that I added is still moles per liter, except now it's 0 0.125 moles divided by 0 0.4, 0, 0, 0 liters, right? Same number of moles, just in a smaller sample, right? So I got 0 0.3125 molar. We can worry about rounding at the very end. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we're going to do the chemistry. We're going to make our ice table just like we did in the previous problem. All right, that hydroxide that I add is still a base, which means it's still going to be reacting with the acid component or the base component. Is the base going to react to the base? No, it's going to react to the acid, right? This is still formic acid, HCO2H. And what are my products? It's the same as the previous one, right? Acid's going to donate here. That's what gives me my water, which is a liquid, and then formate. Again, this is sodium formate and sodium hydroxide. Sodium's a spectator and we don't care about spectators. They're not participating in any of the chemistry here. So we're still making an ice table. Now the concentration is 0 0.3125. And what's gonna happen to it? It's gonna go up or down? Down to what value? All the way down to zero, right? That is 0 0.3125, so this is zero. The problem told me the initial concentration here is 0.5. This is a liquid, who cares? And this is also 0 0.5. Problem told me that. What's going to happen to formic acid? Go down or go up? Down by this same quantity, right? Minus 0 0.3125. So I got 0 0.1875. And then this is still liquid, we don't care. What's gonna to happen to the formate ion? Go up by this quantity, right? Plus 0 0.3125. So that gives me 0 0.8125. So now your choices are make a second ice table or plug into Henderson Hasselbach or the other version that doesn't have the logs and then take the log at the end. Either way, you're gonna get the same thing. So pH is equal to pKa plus log of the concentration of A minus over HA. So the pKa we've calculated before, it's still 3.74 plus the log. A minus is this value, 0 0.8125. HA is this value, 0 0.1875. So that's 3.74 plus 0.637 is what I got. So that's 4.38. Do we agree? Because my least number of sig figs here is two. So I need to have two decimal places in my pH. Questions? And also this had two sig figs in it as well. Questions on part C, part C. So these are both dealing with bases, right? Now we need to look at the condition where we're adding acids. And obviously that's gonna work differently because a base reacts with the acid component, but an acid is gonna react with the base component. Right? That's what makes buffers so great. They have both an acid component and a base component. So that regardless of which one I add, <coughs> Excuse me. I can have some guarantee that my pH isn't going to go all over the place. All right, so now we're taking a two liter sample. We're adding 25 mils of two molar hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is that a strong acid? That's a strong acid, right? So we're assuming it's going to fully dissociate. We don't need to make an ice table. 
for this to figure out what its pH is going to be or figure out what amount of H3O plus I'm adding. Right? So that's good. So the concentration of H3O plus that I add will be, now remember, molarity is moles over liters, right? And moles is molarity times liters, yes? So I need moles over liters. And specifically, I need that to be total total volume, right? So to get number of moles, that would be volume times molarity, right? So 0 0.025 liters times 2.0 moles per liter. That's my numerator. Does everyone see where the numerator comes from here, right? This is the volume of acid that I added, and this is its molarity. These two values give me moles. Yes? Do we agree? And then the total volume, so I need to add 2 liters plus 25 milliliters. Okay? So obviously I need to convert this to liters before I add it. Is everyone with me here? Everyone with me here. So 2.0 plus 0.025 gives me 2.025 liters. Okay? So when you do your arithmetic, that ends up being 0 0.050 moles over 2.025 liters. So I got 0 0.0247 molar. And that's the concentration of the acid that I'm adding, right? Now I need to work about the chemistry. So I say to myself, okay, this acid that I'm adding Is it going to react with the acid component or the base component? Base, okay, what is the base component? Is it formic acid or formate? Which one is it? This is the acid component, right? The base component would be what? CO2H minus, right? That's the conjugate base. So this is going to react. CO2H minus, All right? Acids are donors. Yes, they donate H plus. Donate. So what's my product going to be? H2O, which is a liquid, plus what's this going to be? When this donates an H plus to it, what's it going to be? IH. I hate the location of that scene. It's just the most inopportune spot. H C O 2 H. Does everyone understand the chemistry? Uh, acid will kind of react with the base component, and a base will react with the acid component. Now we just make a nice table and go to town. We just calculated what this value is, 0 0.0247. What's going to happen to it? Go up or go down? Go down all the way to 0, right? Minus 0 0.0247, so this is 0. The problem told me the initial concentration here. What's going to happen? Go down by this same quantity, right? Minus 0 0.0247. So that gives me 0.4753. This is a liquid, so we don't care. And then this was initially 0 0.50. What's going to happen to it? It's going to go up by this quantity, right? Plus 0 0.0247. So that gives me 0 0.5247. Do I have everything I need to plug into Henderson Hasselbach now? I mean, you could take these values and make another ice table, but you'd be doing the same amount of work, right? It's just more writing. You just take these two values, make another ice table, you'll end up with the same answer. Or you can plug directly into Henderson Hasselbach or the uh, non logarithmic version and then take the uh, log at the end. pH is equal to pKa. I just like using Henderson Hasselbach because I already know the pKa, right? Plus log of A minus over HA. 
So pKa is 3.74 plus log A minus is 0.4753 over 0.5247. So that gives me 3.74 plus uh, negative 0 0.0429, rounding to two decimal places, 3.70. Is it reasonable that the pH goes down when we add acid? Yes. Do we agree on the new pH? We agree on this value. Yes, no, maybe. pH was initially 3.74, went down to 3.7. That makes sense given that we added an acid. Do we agree on how we got this? Any questions on part D? E? All right. So we're going to do this again using a different quantity. Nothing like good old repetition to drive it home, right? I mean, that is kind of the idea. If you get to the point where you're like, oh my goodness, if I do another one of these, I'm just going to puke, then you've probably mastered it. All right, let's do this again. This time we're using a 100 mil sample, and we're using 25 mils of two molar, which is what we used in the previous problem. It's just a smaller sample this time, right? So, a little higher. We still need to figure out the concentration of the HCO plus that I add. So that's still moles over liters. How do I get number of moles? Molarity times volume, right? So 0 0.025 times 2.0. Right? That's still the same as what it was in the previous problem. All right. And so this is 0 0.050 moles. What's the total volume? 125, right? 100 plus 25 gives me 125. So that's 0 0.125 liters. So this is a lot more concentrated than the previous problem, which makes sense, right? I've got a 100 mil sample versus a 2 liter sample. So I got 0 0.40 molar. That's way more concentrated than our previous problem, which was 0 0.0247, right? Because in the previous problem, we were adding it to 2 liters. Here, we're only adding it to 100 mils, right? So would you expect just off the top of your head before you do any math, this calculation is going to be a lot more drastic change in pH than the previous one, right? Because look at the concentration of what we're adding. So this is the part that I think most students get backwards, right? It's the chemistry part. I think most students can do this. I think most students can do the ice table. I think the thing that does the most rear end kicking is just setting up the chemistry. What's going on, right? I think 99.9% .9 of the problems I see aren't related to calculating molarity, because most people can do that. And they aren't related to ice tables, because most people can do that. This is the step that is kind of the, the killer. All right? so the acid combines with the what component? Acid component or base component? Base, so that would be the formate ion. All right? this gives a proton, that gives me water, oops. H2O plus H2O liquid plus HCO2H, my acid back. Like I said, writing the reaction is the number one uh, mistake I see for both the acid and the base. I see it for both ways. All right, so let's make our ice table. I see B. This is 0 0.40. It's going to go down to 0. This is 5.5 minus 0 0.40. This is 0.5 plus 0 0.40, so that gives me 0.9. Uh, let's see, pH, 
still plugging into Henderson Oscillog, pKa plus log of 0 0.10 over 0 0.90. So let's see, I got 3.74 plus negative 0 0.954. So that gives me 2.79. In the previous problem, it went from 3.74 to 3.7. In this problem, they went from 3.74 to 2.79. Is that reasonable? Yes. Number one, the pH should drop because I'm adding an acid, always. And number two, I've got way more concentrated this time than I did in the previous problem. Right? So the more concentrated my acid is, the more of an impact on pH I would expect to see. Remember, can you add acid or base to a buffer forever without really seeing a change? No, there is buffering capacity. There is a max amount that you could add where no, your buffer is now um, at its limit. Do we understand part E of number two, number one? <coughs> All right, let's do number two then. Number two. Oh, we just talked about these. How do we compare part B to part C? So in part B, we were initially 3.74. So in part B, what was our final answer? Went to 3.85. And in part C, we went to 4.38. Right, this was using a, what was the two liter sample? And this was using a 400 mil sample. We can do both of these together. And then this one, part D, we went down to 3.70, and we went down to 2.79. Again, two liters versus 100 mils. Why do we see such drastic differences in these two versus these two? Well, you're using a smaller sample, right? You're adding a more concentrated base or a more concentrated acid. Right? Increase the concentration of that acid or base, you're going to see a bigger impact on the pH, which is what I just said. All right. Number two is a lot less work. Number two just asks us to pick the buffer that is best. I'm going to make this double space so that it looks easier on the board. All right, you need a pH 4 buffer, and these are the only ones you have in stock. Which one should you use? So, max buffering occurs when what? Is when what? There's a specific condition. What is it? Right, when H A A minus, in other words, when pH is equal to pKa, right? So if I want my pH to be four, how do I pick the answer here? You figure out the pKa's of all these, right? So let's see, pKa here. Let's see, 3 3.85, 3.82, 3.74, and 6.40. <coughs> Based on that, none of them are four, right? But if this is all that I have available, which one should I pick? You should pick lactic, right? That's the closest of having a pKa to the pH I want, right? Maximum of buffering is gonna occur when the pH equals the pKa. And also, when these two values are as close to each other as possible. So you can control this, but if this is all you have in your stock room, you can't control that, but you can pick the one that's closest to what you want. Questions on two? Any questions on number two? And last problem.
What's the relationship between molarities of HA and A minus and buffering capacity? So what is that relationship? If you make a buffer out of 0.5 molar and 0.5 molar, that's great. But which would be better, 0.5 and 0.5 or 5 and 5? Which is better? The second one, right? Um, as you increase the concentration of HA and A minus, that means more acid and base available to consume added acid or base. Right? If you compare 0 0.5 and a 0 0.5 buffer versus a 5 and 5 buffer, this is going to get maxed out a whole lot faster than this one is. Right? Because remember, ice table, let's just pretend it's 0 0.5 and I'm adding, I don't know, this C value can only be numbers up to 0.5. Right? Because once I max this out, my buffer's shot. But if we're doing a five molar, this value, this change value is a whole lot bigger, right? In other words, I can add more concentrated acid to this one than I can to this one. Before this one maxed, this is gonna max out a whole lot faster than this one will. And if you think back to what you are doing in lab yesterday, right, when you plot your graphs, you're gonna have a base, versus pH, and you're gonna have you know, kind, of, kind of slow increase, and then all of a sudden it's just gonna shoot up and it's gonna level off, right? This is where you've maxed out. You've exceeded the buffering capacity. All right, so that's where we'll stop. Have a nice weekend. I'll see you Monday.